I want to be the very best like no one ever was. P1 is my real test. Attack mode is my charge. I will travel across the land, racing far and wide. Formula E understands the power that's inside. Formula, gotta race a It's you and me. I know it's my destiny. Yeah. Oh, you're my best friend on a track we must defend. Formula, gotta race a Our heart's so true. Our gender will pull us through. You race me and I'll race you. Formula! Gotta race them all! Gotta race them all! Formula E! Today, our electric heroes find themselves in Japan battling for supremacy on the tight streets of the vast metropolis. Tokyo, we free! Welcome to Circuit Breakers post Tokyo E Pre. My name is Dallas. Joined with me, as always, fellow co host Taylor. And we have a special guest because we have a special game that we're going to be playing after we recap this race. He's hidden behind a toilet paper roll right now. Everyone, welcome Andrew to the show. Hello. Thank you for having me. Our season 2023 Formula E fantasy league champion and our season 2022 formula e absolute loser um big turnaround special uh call shout out from eduardo martara hi andrew this is a quick uh, video message uh, from my side i think that uh you weren't lucky uh with your fantasy formula e season uh, challenge with your friends yeah so this is our first time in tokyo and it has been rumored for, I think, like three or four years. It's been a really long, very bumpy road with several jumps, uh, as we've seen on track. Uh, but we finally landed it after all that anticipation. And I don't know about you all, but I would love to know your thoughts on what you felt about the first ever Tokyo e Prix. Uh, that's how I felt. <laughs> I feel like there wasn't quite enough blood spilt. Yeah, I mean, that's true. For for such a tight and technical track, it was actually fairly clean. I mean, we did have a couple of shunts into walls, like as we expected, a couple of yellow flags, um, but only two major DNFs that came out of it all, which was pretty shocking considering how many front wings got completely smashed into barriers. But, you know, it's it feels like this is something that the series has been really looking for is a major venue because i don't think a lot of people are excited about talking about portland uh in the same way that they're excited about talking about tokyo um and he, it i feels like formula e finally went all out on promoting and celebrating this big event and we got so many big news stories leading up to the race this year um i think there's very few places to start other than we have a new team and powertrain manufacturer joining the grid in 2025. Imagine being a car manufacturer and getting like removed for people who make pianos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a racing pedigree dethroned by... Um, by pianos and uh, Swedish furniture, um, because I think there's no other way to uh, talk this over other than this is a straight up Ikea livery on this vehicle. Um, but we have Lola Racing uh, joining into the fold for next year, releasing their concept livery. Um, and the team is gonna be headed by former TS or Tachita uh, personnel, uh, a two-time championship winning team uh, is kind of being refounded in Lola, which is a historic racing pedigree team. And they partnered with Yamaha for their powertrain. And I think this is exactly what the kind of championship needed right now, because I, the grid has been starting to feel like a little stagnant. Like we have Nissan now performing up to the top, 
But for the most part, the midfield and the back of the pack is just destitute with very little performance. And I feel like there's no other way to put it than like a new team coming in with a lot of potential and a completely new powertrain manufacturer that can start being competitive potentially right out of the gate. Just feels like it is it is a new challenge. That's also not where the news ends because in addition to revealing a new uh, team potentially joining the fold, um, Formula E, I think for the first time, actually did something cool. Uh, Dallas, would you like to tell us about the collaboration that they were able to have? I will tell you about it, but I will kind of counter what you just said of actually doing something cool. They do a lot of cool things. We've talked about their season previews, probably the coolest hype video around any sports series. (laughs) But for Tokyo, we had a Liberty Walk Gen 3 car collab. And Taylor, you sent this to me and you're like, check out this new Liberty Walk uh, design that they did. I didn't know who Liberty Walk was, but then I looked it up and saw this super neat neon car. I'm like, oh, whoever the hell Liberty Walk is, bang up job. I really like that they're like, how do we blend Formula E with Japanese like JDM culture? And it's add even more wings that are on the front end of the car. (laughs) Yeah, make the car look like it's directly out of like a 1980s anime. There's not a single person that I showed this to, whether they give a shit about Formula E or not, that thought this was not one of the sickest pieces of design done to a race car that they've seen. It is... um, it is finally cool. I can show this to anyone and be they will kind of have a response to, oh, maybe Formula E is kind of cool. This has nothing to do with actual racing on track, but it was an incredible promo for the, the race as a, as a whole. Uh, Nissan also had a pretty good home weekend. Um, they signed a deal for 2025. They're committed to Gen 4, um, which is a pretty big commitment uh, showing that they're like taking it very seriously. And they're also showing progress uh, up the grid at the same time. Well, I think that probably wraps it up for the news. Um, I think it's time we start talking about quality where for the first time, Mahindra was kind of showing some pace. Dallas. They were Edo came out and secured P3 in qualifying, which if you're a Mahindra fan, super encouraging because they don't have a single championship point between the drivers, the team itself. So for this to be a brand new track, no one has experience racing on it. It kind of was fair game. And Ito in that Mahindra showed up in the duels and, you know, got bested by Ollie and Max Gunt, the Gunt, but still Mahindra uh, P3 was was encouraging. With someone with a vested interest in Mahindra this season, it was like, cool, might have a chance at the points and how things played out. No, turns out there are rules to these races that you have to abide by. <laughs> Whatever. It's all about the regs. You know, I just consistently see Mahindra and I know they have these two really high level drivers and they have done almost nothing. Um, Ito finally show that there can be some pace and I think it's track specific, very technical tracks, but then they've, then they ruined it with overconsumption, you know? And I know that that's a tricky thing to figure out during a race. And like, once it happens, you can't really undo it Uh, because of the bumps. Sometimes the wheels will spin faster or power will be output greater than they're legally allowed which i think is an entirely different problem with this series is that someone can have a really good performance hit a bump and then be disqualified at the end of the race um considering they're throwing them on tracks with like skateboard ramps qualifying was really damning for a lot of teams this race Uh, we had the jaguars not really showing up um the porsches were kind of lost but but ollie rollin managed to throw that thing up front once again like 
I am consistently impressed, but we also had a cute little showcase from Sergio Seta Camera, who is racing as if his entire career depends on it. Just, just squeezing every ounce of juice out of that thing. ERT shows up for qualifying uh, for what that is worth. Uh, Sergio, P4. I think it, I, I think it's Sergio specifically showing up for qualifying because he knows that team, this is a team his effort. last chance. It's a team effort, okay? Both drivers are out there just doing their damnedest, okay? The team got P4. Now, Sergio might have been in the seat, but the team got yeah. P4 in qualifying and yeah. then proceeded to drop like a stone down the grid once the race started. It's to be expected. It's predictable. But, you know, we're going to have Yamaha keyboards uh, taking the space of that next year. So to be expected, ERT coming in P4 in qualifying and then just. One point in the race, Dallas. One point in the race. You did get a point. You did get a point. It has three more than Mahindra. So uh, shout out to Sergio. He's He's doing what he can. He is single-handedly beating Mahindra. Yeah, I feel like the outlook's not good when forty percent of the people with no points are your team. Yeah, yeah, Dallas. If you had stuck to uh, being a neo boy, you'd be in a better position right now. Yeah, well, it is what it is. You live and you learn. Uh, let's uh, let's talk about the driver championship standings right now just to give a little snapshot five races into the season between the top five spots which is currently held by pascal.exe he only has a three-point margin over a nice guy nick cassidy but of the top five racers in the points race it is a 15 point spread it's tight every single race this season thus far has had a different winner in each race so it's anyone's game to pull out i thought going into it it's like okay it's the second year of gen 3 jake fucking dennis after his love island audition is gonna run the tables again we're not seeing that uh jake dennis is currently uh fourth in the running behind this surprise nissan performance of daddy ollie roland uh, and then moving on to the the teams, uh, a little bit more of a spread. Mahindra still down at the very bottom. Jaguar with 100 points even. Uh, Porsche is right behind 83. And then Andretti, Nissan, and DS Penske all separated within about 15 points. So it's wide open at this point in the season. You know, comparing it to Formula One. We kind of already know the results, what's going to happen in the season. It's going to be Max Verstappen again. whoop de doo Formula E, we haven't the slightest clue. And who would have thought that like we would have the surprise of both Jaguars like barely finishing the race? Um, it's been two races now where very, very last minute kind of squeaking through points. I mean, Evans lost his win last race on the final two corners. Um, they might not be as dominant as we all predicted they would be. I think there's a real battle that is brewing as everyone is coming to grips. And with the new contender of that Nissan powertrain, it is a little more complicated than we thought it might be going into this. But that's Formula E. I think, too, Jaguar's front wing is even less dense of paper mache than the rest of the field because Sao Paulo, Nick Cassidy went skateboarding. And then now here in Tokyo, Mitch Evans goes skateboarding. Now, he didn't just yeah. absolutely slam into a wall and DNF. Uh, he was able to kind of hobble back to the pits, get a new front wing on, had a safety car because of the debacle, and was still at least able to finish the race. Uh, but, yeah, I think jaguars getting a run for its money with these other teams and there's still a lot of racing that needs to happen in this season what's up you e-heads it's that time of the show for you to get off of the racing line and into attack mode to give this show a boost if you're watching on youtube don't forget to like this episode and subscribe to the channel and if you're listening on an audio platform head on over to youtube at circuit breakers pod and do the very same thing it gives us that algorithmic boost that really gets our wheels turning so thank you 
And back to the show. We got to talk about the jump. <laughs> Can we? We need an update on every single driver's tailbone status on how their ass is feeling a day after this race. <laughs> this this was yeah this was so crazy i have on the youtube feed all four tires are getting off of the ground on this jump like and you know that the suspension in these cars is not this isn't a rolls royce just smooth as butter ride this had yeah this is not hurt. a this is not an f-150 uh a lifted f-150 this is as as tight and as dampened a suspension as you can have. And they did this, what? The race was 35 laps after the added laps, qualifying, free practice. He probably did, I don't know, what, uh, 50 laps on this track? At, like, every single time. And even on the broadcast, just, bagum, 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 bagum. Like, how, who the fuck signed off on this? Yeah, just an absolute spine crusher. Like, I want, uh, I feel like there needs to be uh, a cry, like the chiropractic crunching sound uh, that happens, like, you know, the ASMR chiropractic cracking sounds. Uh, they need to put that in for each landing that happens in this. Um, but I, I, who do you think got the most air? Because we saw a lot of really big jumps, especially in like qualifying and practice, you know, and I think, I think it goes to Fenestraz, who's like, on track to becoming the first ever quadriplegic driver in the series. <laughs> yeah. We imagine too, there's uh, the little sacks of spinal fluid in every single bracket joint of your spine. That whole thing. Those things are dry now. Those things are dry. They're dry and it's like the race car drivers in general are, are pretty short chaps. Uh, I'd like to think that these drivers lost at least a 16th of their height when they got out of their car after this race. This, <laughs> this thing was so gnarly. And they, did the, they did the weight, they did the, the weigh in check, uh, but they did not do the height measurement check <laughs> yeah. to see if they've changed. Because they knew that they were just going to be noticeably shorter. And this bump, from a speculative standpoint, could have maybe been the cause of an issue that Sam Bird winner in Sao Paulo uh, an issue that he was having that we saw in the team radio video his wheel his steering wheel was just not not attached we put my steering wheel on didn't put it on properly my steering wheel nearly just came up in my hands Sam does everything feel okay now I've lost the place to blame me now because of it does the around with the steering wheel Sam. It's fine now, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, I'm fine. It's fine. <laughs> He's fine. He's fine. God. I don't you know I feel like uh Sam has the same responses to his therapist when she's trying to talk to him about the divorce. Just like Sam. Look, I think it's time for you to open up about your feelings. You know, like divorce is never easy. You can't ke just keep driving away from your emotions. No, it's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. Okay. It's like the uh, the scene from Goodwill Hunting. It's like it's not your fault. <laughs> it's not your fault, Sam. It's, it's not fine. Your fault. It's fine. I, I do feel like as a dr like yes. You expect people to set the equipment up properly, but as a driver, you literally touch th three things in that car with a part of your body that's not your ass, and it's both pedals and the steering wheel. And I feel like you should be able to find a problem more than halfway into, you know, into the race. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> you, you wonder. It really makes you wonder. I don't know. Did they? Did is this? Um, did McLaren use IKEA parts? Are they already buying parts from uh, from Yamaha, IKEA, uh, to put this together? No, I I think it's well and fine and dandy parts. But going back to the jump, that was what turn three right after. I think the first <laughs> lap, Sandberg goes takes that turn, goes over the bump, and then looks up and it's like it's fine, just holding his wheel up, not even connected, <laughs> and he just. 
cinches it back it's in. Fine. I'm fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. That fine. was his. It's that fine. was his pep talk to himself. Uh, do you think? Do you think he uh, talked to the police about this when he got um, pulled over after his all night bender on the way home? Well, that's the thing. You didn't get steering wheel popped off after that too. He just pull. He shows the police officer his steering wheel. I'm fine. I'm it's fine. Fine. <laughs> What's the legalities of it? Can you drunk drive a car when the wheel isn't attached? Like you know the thing. Yeah. It's like the hack. I if was you, swerving. If you do decide, which you never should, but if you decide to get behind the wheel after having a few drinks, if you get in the passenger seat and like pass out. And then a cop shows up and it's like, you know, hey, what's going on in here? And it's like, oh, I was just sleeping. I was, wasn't in the driver's seat. Is it the same thing? Cars that have detachable wheels where you get pulled over and then you just throw your wheel out the window and be like, I, it's fine. I, I wasn't driving anything. How can I drive? There's no wheel. Well, I think that's um, that's the fastest way out of a DUI, Dallas. <laughs> Great advice given here on circuit breakers but no going back to the parts i think that it was just the the unforgivingness of the track that start of the race you 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 don't have your wheel it's it's, it's he has to secure it on and lock it in and be like it's it's fine i can't use my fucking wheel but it's fine it's fine it's fine it's fine i'm fine it's fine <laughs> so i would blame it on the track not McLaren, because they just, you don't come off of a race win and just some slap dickery, just forget yeah. to secure the wheel. I yeah. do feel like it was really nice of him, you know, he said it's fine, what, one, two, three, four, five times, but the engineer's probably still thinking, but are you fine? <laughs> so he throws that in there, I'm fine too, and then goes back to his main point. <laughs> Which is, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. I, I don't know if he's just feeling stressed. I mean, he made a pretty good bid of securing custody of his race seat, but now he's struggling for custody of his steering wheel. <laughs> yeah, there's always something just going on. The struggles of just being over the hump and just trying to make things work for the best. Dating as a single, it's, you know, dating as a single father, you know. The, the, the steering wheel is just never on as tight after the weekend with the ex-wife <laughs> <laughs> oh god um but that was not the only mishaps that really happened uh in this race because um our favorite butcher managed to show back up once again as he always does dallas you want to tell us a little bit about what degrassi had in store this race yeah, I'm thinking of dubbing it because it happens so often. I'm thinking of dubbing it the Degrassi Death Note because he seems to just yeet himself <laughs> into a competitor's car. And yeah, his car takes some damage, but he doesn't get out of the race or into the pit. So this race, the Degrassi Death Note came knocking to get a hype and he use. Uh, just tried to squeeze inside of a corner, forced J.K. Penny Hughes to go wide, and there wasn't really a wide, so he ended up in the wall, front wing, front bumper, everything demolished. He limped back to the pits uh, and actually continued on with the race. Both the papayas, even though one didn't have a steering wheel, the other one didn't have a front wing, they didn't DNF, which I was surprised when we were watching this. I was like, oh, fuck, the papayas are out. And they weren't out. They were just a little bit further behind Dan Tictum, which, as it was, uh, J.K. Penny Hughes ended up passing Dan Tictum. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Degrassi went ham on J.K. Penny Hughes and added the sophomore driver, a part of his car, into that illustrious longstanding trophy room. Yeah, you know, um, last race I mentioned that I was going to do some scrubbing through races to try to figure out the total kill count of Lucas Degrassi on track to figure out how many trophies he's earned. Um, and in doing so, now it might not be a total accurate number because it's hard to scrub through 116 total races in a single week. But I currently have a total kill count of 26 
That's out of 116 races. Now, I don't know what the percentage of wings to races that is, but... That's 22.5%. So, nearly a quarter of his races, he has claimed the bodywork of a rival driver. Be it his teammate, be it be it J.K. Haypenny Hughes. I mean, it, it is insane. He, Degrassi does not spare a Haypenny. Can I? I think drivers, when they get done with qualifying, they they ask their engineer where they're at in the lineup, or they just check. And any driver that is either plus three or minus three between Lucas Degrassi just goes, "Fuck! <laughs> God damn it!" <laughs> They they're like looking looking over their shoulder at all points, just like oh fuck, where is he? Just this looming ominous presence, this like dark this this evil aura that's just like surging through the track, chasing after you. <laughs> just he, he like races. the Grim Reaper is the Grim Reaper is just in your rearview mirrors at all times. Yeah, he just races with his brow down, just, like, <laughs> just evil evil man. You don't need brakes when you have the person in front of you. That's, that's true. That that's is, true. That's very true. Use their brakes. And you don't need regen when you have someone else pushing you through a corner. Um, but uh, in addition to that, um, we were also treated to a very frustrating return to the U.S. broadcast of CBS Sports. But there was a highlight to this, and that... For a, for a single moment during this race, Daruvula managed to make it to P2. He did. <laughs> uh, miraculously. Um, mainly because he was running P16 and then like instantaneously, like he's doing like string theory, uh, molecular teleportation. A dude ends up in P2. This was on the, uh, the CBS broadcast. Uh, I'll just run it. So, whoa, there's Daruvula. No, no, it's Max Gunther. <laughs> yeah, you, you could tell someone in the production just was like, I don't know, it's the blue car. <laughs> yeah, but it's the uh, it's the brown driver in the blue car uh, is, is the thing that I think got lost. Is they, they You know, there's two drivers in that team, right? There is Max Gunther, maybe the whitest man on planet Earth. And then there's Jayon Daruvula who is an Indian man. I feel like, I feel like the broadcast probably could have figured it out a little sooner than they did. It was almost, I think that they put that out there and then they had an immediate shock factor to recognize that that was wrong, uh, which is disappointing because that truly, you know, it was great to see Daruvula running in the points for even just that fraction of a second. And it, this just plays on so perfectly like, the the charming flaws of formula e that kind of transcended to the charming flaws of the broadcast team but what that didn't do was make cbs look any better uh, you can't make cbs look better in my book now this long standing institution of a broadcasting company that broadcasts all sorts of sports when it comes to Formula E, fuck right off. Get out. We don't want you anymore. We never wanted you. I guess because this race in the U.S. was on in the late hours of the evening and the wee hours of the morning, that CBS is like, we'll take it. We don't have anything else going on of the hundreds of other sports. Let's just broadcast it. I think, Taylor, when you told me that Tokyo E Prix is well. It's it's not going to be on Roku. It's on CBS. I almost didn't show up for the stream. I almost didn't want to yeah. watch it. Watch it because this fucking network. It was incredible to go from how luxurious it was to watch on Roku to how miserable it was to watch on CBS. Like it, it was incredible how drastically my emotions went from excited to watch a race to consistently annoyed it was uh, you guys you guys don't like like abrupt commercial breaks right after the safety car ends 
<laughs> no, no, I frankly, um, no one's particularly excited to buy your grandma's leg exercise. The leg exercise. Seated. Yeah. The leg no one's excited pro. about <laughs> that's, that's true. Like, they weren't even good commercials because they're late night commercials. Yeah, exactly. Well, they've never been good commercials. They're like Cialis or like, I, I have no clue. Um, what I'm sure the, there's a lot of people who would argue Cialis is good, but. At uh, 11 o'clock at night trying to get a stiffy yeah, and they're like, you. what, what can I do in between this race? What product would aid me? That this Darula in second. <laughs> That'll make anyone hard. It just went from six to midnight. Uh, now, uh, what I will say, even though those commercials are so terrible, and I thought that they were behind us, we kind of took our own commercial breaks uh, when the actual commercial breaks were playing, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, it started out the first break. I think we just zoomed in on Nick DeVries's teeth uh, and got like like pixelated, like got very close. Like you could see the the enamel in his teeth. And then yeah, it, it kind of almost indistinguishable from Wario. <laughs> I don't think you have to get that close to see his enamel, but continue. Pixelated enamel. <laughs> uh, and I kind of blacked out over like the next five or six commercial breaks. And at that point, we we're about halfway through the race. Uh, but Andrew, I think you had asked a question of what Sam Bird's legs look like. Yeah, I told you to Google a picture of him, and I believe I asked for a Sam Bird in a swimsuit. Yeah, and we found a different Sam or Bird. Or in shorts. Yeah, we found him in shorts because you wanted to see his legs because you thought that he was just going to have like little tiny twig legs. Uh, turns out he doesn't, but then in one of the results on Google Images... Uh, was from Wiki Feet Men. And so we perused a little bit on this website and found that Sam Bird is the only Formula E driver to have an entry on this site. Um, but, I mean, I guess that's the silver lining of these CBS commercials is we, everyone that was in the stream watching, uh, got to see probably way more feet that they had bargained for at the Tokyo e Prix. <laughs> yeah um you did introduce the concept of we found this we were hostage okay <laughs> we were hostage to your emerging foot fetish dallas okay so we i didn't know i was gonna we like definitely awaken something in you i didn't know i was gonna like formula e as much as i did when i first started watching i didn't know that i would enjoy perusing wiki feet men as much as i did <laughs> with an audience because yes oh, nobody God. does that's how it starts yes as the stream was set up like you kind of were at the mercy of what i had on the screen uh so i felt like i took you on this journey as much as i took myself on a journey i was just frankly baffled by the incredible search filters they had <laughs> that was that was truly the highlight of the entire race for me is seeing what kind of search filters WikiFeet men had. You go by. I think that the most magical part was definitely how positive and active the community was. It's not even a joke. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but downside is, is that I believe Sandbird's feet were only rated at about 3.5. Yeah. And I tried to. Yeah boost that rating but then it asked for an account i'm like i sometimes you just got to draw the line and not take it any further and that's what i did well if you're listening viewers um go ahead and make a wiki feet men account we're gonna boost sam Bird to being feet of the week on wiki feet men <laughs> Uh, the internet has uh, strange corners and strange powers. So we, as a community, can make it happen. We got to rally. But if, we got to rally. If the idea of feet as a fetish makes your tummy all upset and give you diarrhea, then that just segues into the next segment, which is the DNF diarrhea no finish of this race. Now, there were two DNFs, both related. I will show you 
this video from the uh, this clip rather from the team radio to show how this DNF happened and then we can talk about who had the diarrhea in this situation. Somebody crashed on my back, my, my car is Everything okay, Nick? Ooh, my hands. My hands. Are you alright? to get back. My hands. Yeah. <sighs> hmm. Nick, Nick, you can just park the car if you need to, mate. If your hands are hurting. If you can get it back, then great. If you can't, don't worry. I think that the diarrhea DNF is going to have to go to Nick DeVries. And that is strictly because Lucas Degrassi did not have a chance to diarrhea because Nick DeVries' nose cone was shoved too far up the backside. He got plugged. But I do think that the subsequent fallout of that means that Nick DeVries is unfortunately going to need assistance with the cleanup as his hands are no longer of use to him. Yeah, you can see on the onboard cam the wheel shake almost and eh, not almost but close to a uh, a robin Fryns shake yeah up. we almost had a Fryns. at least it stayed on that's true <laughs> it's, it's true it's true same with his wrists looks like his wrists stayed on luckily um yeah i'm giving it i'm giving it to nick devries uh, andrew what do you think um, I I think he I'm really proud of him that he didn't break his wrist like Robin, but um I also think his bones are stronger than glass, so Yeah, him quitting early because of that yeah, diarrhea. Yeah, I think the uh the telling part is the subtitles here, his engineer saying, You can just you can park the car, you know, if you're hurt, like it's I'm not gonna tell you to drive all the way back yeah. to the pits. No, it's gonna take too long. So the thing is, is like, his engineer's like, I don't want to hear this guy complain the whole race. Just park the car. Who cares? Whereas, like, Sam Bird would have just been like, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's fine. It's Everything is fine. My wrists are fine. No, I think, I think definitely Nick was like, it's, I could park the car, but it's too late. I'm already shitting. I would yeah. rather just get out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those are what those are my wiping hands. I do think that it is actually fitting where like even if his hands were unusable, I feel like there was potential for him to just take his helmet off and drive with his teeth. Like I feel like that would have been an easy solution to solving having both hands fly off of the car. Um but well, you know, it's hard it's hard to make make heads or tails of it. But I think it definitely ended up tails. Yeah, I, I th this is a, a general consensus. Nick DeVries is the diarrhea no finish of Tokyo. You hate to see it, but I don't know. What, I just mostly don't like to see him. <laughs> so, so you've said. Uh, you've yeah. gone on record a few times saying it's the most uncomfortable human to look at. But even being uncomfortable... He still takes shits, and he took a shit in this race. Yeah, I actually think this is the most coverage Nick DeVries has had in this entire season up to this point. I think we've been talking about like, recently like diarrhea how... coverage, like splatter, <laughs> probably more splatter and an addition, uh, more televised splatter that he's had um, since returning from the splat fest that he had in F one last year. Like, like it ran up his back. In his racing suit. Yeah, they they hosed him down. <laughs> okay. Well, we have a double header coming up next on the calendar. Uh, two rounds in Masano. Uh, before we get to a little preview of that race and that track, uh, we do have a recurring segment of guessing ERT energy levels. Now, leading up to this race, uh, Taylor, you and I had both guessed energy levels, and I was way mm -hmm. too generous of what they would finish at. Uh, as it goes, uh, Sergio set to camera finished right on the zeros, right where he was supposed to at the end of the race. Danny boy. A round of applause. It is. Uh, didn't run out 
uh, didn't get DQ'd like you did in Sao Paulo. Uh, that's that's what you're supposed to do. Use every bit of energy that you have to cross the line and leave nothing else in the tank or in the battery, so to speak. Danny Boy, different story, but I think there might be a little asterisk to it. Um, by the time he finished the race, it showed 1% on his energy levels on the, the tower stack on TV. Uh, mm -hmm. but I don't think that the energy levels were updating that far back. Uh, once the, the majority of the pack had finished, they're like, yeah, da, da, there he is 1%, 0%, 5%, doesn't matter, whatever. Uh, I don't have a drop for it, but it is in the team radio video. Dan Tictum is just, he drives angry, which is, uh, good. It can be a good thing. Uh, but when you're in an ERT, it's not good. It's just frustration. They had called out to him for an energy code and he responds with don't bother calling energy because it doesn't matter anymore. I'll just stay on target and drive about. He doesn't, he doesn't care anymore. He's going to drive about. So leading into a double header in Misano back to the conventional circuits. It's not on the streets. This is a full blown track. Looking at this track and seeing ERT's numbers from this week in Tokyo, what do you guys think ERT is going to finish with in both of these races? Just average it out, just a guess between the two, what they're going to finish with. Well, that is, you know, that is going to be, I think, the real challenge here because I believe that Mazzano was rumored to be the first time they're potentially going to use attack charge. Oh. So that could be a huge game changer for ERT, depending on how much kilowatt they're going to be paying for their attack charge, because they could be very conservative in that charge. But I am also thinking double DNFs. If it is an attack charge, I think it's going to be a double DNF for ERT. <laughs> they're going to they're going to end the race before. As soon as that charger comes on, it's going to blow up the battery. Are we um, going to get two more time slips in the ERT pit? <laughs> yeah. They're going to start their own little gang in, uh, in Mizano in 1846. Um, no, I am, uh, I am thinking if there is attack charge, double DNF. If no attack charge... I think they're going to bring it pretty close again. I'm going to say 2% Danny Boy, and we're going to do minus 1% Sergio Fentanyl Camera. <laughs> he's just going to run out? I think he's going to run out, and uh, and he's going to get another D disqualification. <laughs> uh, Andrew, what is uh, your guesses? Well, shit, Taylor took mine. I was going to guess that uh, they're going to run out. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I guess, uh, is it Sergio? Sergio is going to run out. And, hmm, as far as Dan, I'll, get, I'll give him a generous, like, point, point two. Point two. Mm. So it's right down to the wire. That's it. I Dallas? Think, I think uh, there's definitely a divide between these two drivers uh sergio when he's at least relayed energy information uh can finish around where he's supposed to tokyo finishes right on zero uh, i think that both drivers will finish both races um i can definitely see sergio set to camera dnfing at least one for going over the energy uh, allocation uh, but he'll, Sergio will be less than 1%. I'd say 0. 0.5 if he's able to finish the race. But Danny Boy, we've we've seen it before. I mean, we saw it in Mexico in the first race of the season. He was sitting at like 5. I think he's going to be between 4 and 5% at the finish. Mm -hmm. uh, potentially mm -hmm. even a blue flag situation where he has to yield because mm -hmm. he's getting caught. No, I don't think. I think he would just retire himself before letting that happen. I th there's not a chance in hell he is going to put up with being blue flagged uh, like that. That would be a Formula E first. Yeah, he just walks off the track and away from the team and just never returns. He just quits, and I would support him yeah. for that. I would understand. Yeah, we would have to prob probably kickstart his career, put together a Kickstarter for finding him a new race seat. Yeah. 
Well, uh, April 13th and 14th are round six and seven of the E Circus in Misano, Italy. Now, that does it for Tokyo. That does it for preview of the next race, but the very special game that we have in store. Last episode, we were trying to think of, you know, what Pokemon coincides with what Formula E driver. Who's that driver? So, I've cooked up a little game for us here. I'm going to be showing you a slide of a Pokemon, in which case you will both guess which driver it is. Upon reveal, you'll be scored points. But in addition, I have also added in a little tagline for each driver, as they do for Pokemon, like the electric mouse Pokemon, or some dumb bullshit like that. If you can guess that descriptor, you get a bonus point. Starting out... We have Charmeleon. Dallas, Andrew, who's that driver? My gut is going with the Count, Sebastian Buemi. A little firecracker, mm -hmm. uh, got some some spunk and moxie to him. My instinct is Antonio Felix da Costa. I don't know why, okay. but I'm just feeling it from his driver picture. All right. And does anyone want to take a guess on the title of this driver? Fiery passion. Forgettable in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew is probably the closest. This is Sasha Fenestras. Mm. Now, I pick this because this is his sophomore year, so he's essentially kind of like a middle-of-the-road Pokemon. But he has the potential to become everyone's favorite Pokemon. The most Charger. badass Pokemon. I like he's a very that. eager driver. I like that. Next driver. Who's that driver? I feel like it's it's one of the Kiwis. I'm going to guess Nick Cassidy. Nick Cassidy? Okay. Dallas, who's that driver? Just coming off of Tokyo, I'm going to go with the Gunt because he showed his teeth. He's got a bite to him, um, but also just kind of uh, just hair that you just kind of want to pet. So we want to take a crack at the title of this driver? Woof. Yeah, I was going to say, did, they got that dog in them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the driver is Sam Bird, the divorcee ah. driver, <laughs> with the same bleach yeah. blonde hair. The hair, fuck it's the hair. I ah. thought for sure Sam Bird had to be a bird, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I you was know, waiting on was, like that a. That was my initial eye. instinct. That was my initial instinct. All right, next driver. I think you've all started to figure out the rhythm. It is mostly which Pokemon <laughs> looks like this. All right. Next driver and Pokemon. Who's that Pokemon? My guess is Danny Boy because of that flowing hair. And he wants to fly Ooh, free hair. like a bird. But he just can't. Dan is an excellent guess. But just to be different, I'm going to say Max Gunther because of the way his hair is slicked back. Ooh, that's, mm. that's probably it. I like that. It is Nico Muller, the bird ass looking Pokemon <laughs> driver. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because he looks like a bird. <laughs> and side by side, you sit down, you realize he does look exactly like a bird. All right. I, I would have guessed the slogan, I'm not Sam Bird. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. Next Pokemon. This one I'll say is mostly a vibe thing, but also there is some identity between the two, driver and Pokemon. I'm gonna guess Robin. I'm gonna guess the Staff Man. I'm gonna stop Staff Van Man. Dorn. Yeah. Ooh. Mm. That would be a pretty good guess, but unfortunately, both of you were wrong. It is Nick Cassidy, the oh. friendly driver. That's a good one. And also just fucking OP. Exactly. Very, driver. very powerful Pokemon stat wise. Oh, Nick Cassidy. Very powerful driver stat wise. But it also doesn't have any wrists. They also have the same <laughs> color eyes, which I thought was pretty endearing when I was making this. Who's that Pokemon? Who stinks? Who looks like the most stinkiest driver? I think we can probably make a make a general assumption universally. I'm going to let Dallas guess first on this one. I think, to my chagrin, it's Dan Tictum. Norman Natto. Okay. Now, I picked this one for a multitude of reasons. 
one, this driver has had a history and our very first diarrhea DNF and has consistently had gastrointestinal issues, but also the <laughs> texture of the skin reminds me of J.K. Penny Hughes, the, the irritable bowel driver. Bowel driver. <laughs> Fuck the lore, they too. Lined up. The lore of the him lore, working in the coal everything mines. Everything lined up. Damn it. This, you know? Yeah, we are, we're starting to fall behind, boys. You are zero for zero. It is a scoreless game so far. <laughs> we are Mahindra. One of us is going to score one. Once I we get like to the these, last you know, driver. These, to me, these felt very intuitive when I was making them, but the, I knew that I was pulling some risk in doing the irritable bowel driver, but <laughs> I hope that it's a little more clear now. Who's that driver? This one is a lot more conceptual but I think it is maybe the strongest comparison between a driver and the Pokemon. I'm going to guess my boy, Pascal. I feel like my guess, this might be the one that I get right because I'm at an advantage because I've been here every single episode and I've spent a lot of time editing. And there is a driver that Taylor, you have referred to as a sort of phantom. And that is the glass wrist man, Robin Frine. So I'm going to go with Robin Frine's. Do you have a tagline for this one? Uh, uh, his you can't see his wrists because they're invisible. The wristless driver, yeah. Robin Frines. That's a bonus Dallas, point. That then. That's be, pretty. That much... is going to be two points. That is two points, Dallas, on the board. Yeah. And I also wanted to point this out because in making this slideshow, I recognized something harrowing. He has his <laughs> oh, wrist no. injury on display <laughs> on his driver profile. <laughs> Nice. You know, it is it is amazing to see a man's um, where he's come from. You know, he's showing his scars. All right. This is a very close vibe selection because I don't know who the fuck this Pokemon is or what they're doing. It's far fetched. Apparently, they're. Yeah, I know far they're far fetched, but I have no real understanding of this Pokemon in the same way that I don't really understand this driver. But they're always there. I think. I think we're starting to get in the swing of things. I think I have this one right as well. I'm going to go with Norman Natto uh, because was... they share a similar, really stylish V-shaped unibrow. And I feel like because Norman Natto is French that they use a lot of leeks in their cuisine. I could be wrong, but that's my guess. So I was also going to guess Norman Natto, but okay. to be different, I'm going to guess the only other person I see with jump out eyebrows and that's uh sergio does anyone have a tagline for this driver they would like to propose fear the brow <laughs> i can't top that dallas you are correct it is norman natto the other the driver other driver the, un the unknown <laughs> kind of whatever pokemon exactly it's the other driver who's uh who's there and uh oftentimes carries all the tms that you need to get through the obstacles in pokemon which is what I guess Farfetch'd is most used for. This one is maybe the more abstract of them, but this truly comes down to, I looked at this guy and I said, these two kind of look alike. And maybe there's some, maybe there's some intention behind that, but also I'm a little creeped out by this Pokemon and the same way that I'm creeped out a little bit by this driver. I'm going to ask you to dig deep. I'm going to go with, this also this one also would have been a pretty good one for Sam Bird now knowing what his feet rating is. <laughs> <laughs> I think these are probably three point five feet, if I'm being honest, on Wiki Feet men. Is this Gunther? Wanna add a tagline or anything? The German sleeper. <laughs> <laughs> Dallas, who's that driver? Uh well, you said that you're a little weirded out by this driver, so I know it's not Nick DeVries because you are very freaked out by him. So deeply, I'm gonna, deeply uh, concerned. I'm going to go with, and I, I don't know if it necessarily follows it, but I don't fully know how you subtly feel about his teammate, Ito. So I'm going to guess Ito, and my tagline is just going to be... Go! Well... It is Maxi Gunther, Ooh, and it's, yes! the Arian, it's the Aryan driver. <laughs> um, there's nothing quite particular that screamed Aryan about this Abra, but it is kind of almost similar spelling to Aryan. Um, <laughs> I almost, I almost would have done a Nine Tails there. 
I, you know, that was my initial thought, but I thought this one was funnier because it looks kind of uncomfortable in the way that looking at Max Gunther feels uncomfortable in like a weird way. Like a, I don't know, like maybe like fuck someone. Like he can culture. see into your genetics. Yeah. Like add, add some, add some new, new, you know, blood into your, you know, your bloodline, your heritage. Who knows? Just too white. <laughs> does, does Andrew get too, Andrew, what was your tagline? Just the German driver? The which, German which is, sleeper. The, the German sleeper, which I, frankly, I, I prefer that more than the Aryan driver. So I'm going to give Andrew two points for that. Okay. So it is, it is three I'm to back two. In it. I'm it's back three to in two. It. Who's that driver, guys? Oh, this one is this one is probably my favorite selection. Given that this has been uh, mainly some sort of connection of like physical features of drivers. Uh, this one is also deeply connected to their personality, both physical and personal bond between this Pokemon and this driver. I'm going to go with Degrassi. You think this is Degrassi? Kind of a little slithery snake on track. I'm going to go with Ido because his eyes look too far apart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm disappointed um, that neither one of you have gotten this one because this is Count Buemi. Oh. Um, and I and I picked yeah. this one for a couple of reasons. One, they both spit a lot. <laughs> In fact, Ekans' main attack is its uh, poison spit. Um they both hiss, <laughs> and at the same time, they're also both completely non-threatening in reality. Uh, so, this is this is Count Buemi. All right, who's that driver? He's pretty cool. Um, that's Jake Dennis. You think this is Jake Dennis? You want to give it a tagline? I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I'll circle back around to my previous guess. This one might be right. I'm going to guess Lucas Degrassi, and the tagline is, fuck you, I'm going to cut you up. This is the dangerous driver. Basically driving with the butcher. <laughs> yeah, the butcher. <laughs> oh, uh, the butcher. Yeah. The butcher has showed up. Lucas Degrassi. Initially, when I was building this out, I uh, chose Lucas Degrassi as Charizard because he's kind of the OG. But um, after watching the Tokyo race, I quickly changed it to uh, the butcher's lifestyle, which is um, going to be Caesar here. Um, uh, most I dangerous driver on the road. Like Voltorb for that one. Mm, the self destruct, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who's that driver, guys? I think I'm gonna go with the staff on this one. Kind of matching that DS Penske gold gives anyone that finds themselves at a Waffle House late at night that nice jolt that they need. I'm going with the staff. I was thinking Stoffel as well, but I'm gonna go with Mitch fucking evans why are you going with mitch evans because he's just like a little a little electric boy i don't know <laughs> so, all right that's the tagline mitch evans little electric boy for both of you i'm somewhat disappointed i thought this one was a little more legible this is jake fucking dennis oh, the cool driver damn it. because he is not only the fastest but he's also the most electrifying driver on the grid enter dallas who's that pokemon in my mind, there's two options for this one, so it is kind of a coin flip between these two drivers because I think they're both doing a lot of carrying on track and off. Well, with the hint, maybe J-E-V, the old carrying the new. That makes very little sense, but you know what? <laughs> That's what I'm best there's at. No, there's no stupid guesses, just stupid people. Again, I, I think this one puts me on an advantage for being a part of the show i'm not even gonna guess that's antonio felix da costa he's serving uh his superiors which is uh porsche and porsche's ai project pascal verline uh that's that's dak right there does anyone want to take a crack at the title of this driver the the the, care, the ai caretaker <laughs> It is the caretaker Pokemon. It's Dacosta. Dallas is running away with this. Yeah, we kind of knew that was how it was going to end up, didn't we? Mm, I, I didn't. I had some hope for you. But there's plenty more drivers to go. This one is a total vibe and aesthetic choice. 
I think that's the rookie Jeruvala because I don't know if those are ears, but I feel like those are similar to the size of Jeruvala's ears. And then that Maserati blue. So I'm going to go with Jeruvala. Andrew, would you like to make a better guess? Maybe I'll pivot to Dan Tictum and it's going to be, uh, let's see, what did he say about the energy readings? Like, I don't even care anymore. Like, it doesn't matter. It is Dan Tictum, the brat <laughs> driver. <laughs> so disrespectful. I saw this one. I saw this one, and I realized I couldn't pick anyone else other than Dan Tictum for this because not only is he definitely just a middle evolved Pokemon who's not good at any one thing, but he's also got a little shitty <laughs> attitude, just like this little mid evolved Pokemon. Um, and that was two points. That's two Did points? That's two points. Who's that Pokemon? And who's that driver? Pokemon also doing a lot of carrying in the same way this driver is doing some carrying. Is this Pascal? I'm going to go with Pascal on this one. Dallas, who's that Pokemon? Andrew, we asked you before we started recording if you had listened to an episode yet, and you uh, <laughs> accurately and humbly admitted no, um, which is showing now. Really would have helped you out in this in this challenge. Uh, that is the Daddy Roland, and the tagline is, fuck these kids, we drive. This is the Daddy Driver, Daddy Dang. Roland. I was so um, expecting him to be Snorlax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was trying to not, I was trying to steer away from um, an incredibly offensive one. So I leaned more towards the, the fatherhood uh, route. <laughs> um, but uh, Kangaskhan felt most fitting as he is um, nurturing and looking after young Fenestraz. This one's my favorite. This one is strictly physical <laughs> features. <laughs> is this uh is this John Eric Byrne? No, 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 no. I change, I change, I change. This is definitely Nick DeVries. <laughs> Nick DeVries. No, but it has no teeth. <laughs> That's true. There is no teeth. I would have been pretty upset with you for choosing Nick DeVries, as I would okay. certainly incorporate um, teeth. Is this Mitch fucking Evans? I don't like the lack of confidence Andrew has in that pick because I was going to pick Mitch Evans because just looking at his driver picture on the site, he has these same tired eyes, those hypnotic, like, tired eyes. And he's also holding his hands up. Oh, shit. He's holding his hands up like he's hypnotizing. So I would have guessed Mitch Evans and probably got the points, but I'll just do a throwaway and say John Eric Vern. Does anyone want to put a tagline for this driver? I need a nap. Uh, it is Mitch <laughs> Evans, the nose driver. As I realized uh, in looking for a driver that embodied Mitch Evans, the sleepy eyes was one thing, but the scale of nose between both the Pokemon and the driver <laughs> is pretty accurate. That was the only reason I picked this Pokemon. <laughs> Can, Dallas, who's that driver? Andrew, are you thinking of the same driver I'm thinking of that has how could I not cuspids? be? <laughs> Can we just wash this one? Because it's no one else except Nick DeVries. I think this is the last one. I'm pretty sure this is should the last we, one. Should we say it at the oh, wait, same no, time? Oh, no, this is not the last yeah, there's one. there's still a few more drivers one. to go. How about for points, whoever can be closest to the tagline? Okay, boys, who's that driver? This is Nick it's DeVries. Nick DeVries. Let's, get a, let's get a tagline for that driver. A bitey little Dutch mouse. I'm going to say 90% teeth. It is Nick DeVries, the biting driver. I think driver. Dallas gets the point. Oh, man. Starting to run away with it on this one. No, I got the next one. Watch. This one's easier than you think. I'm going to guess Deruvula, and the tagline will be playing it safe at the back. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Dallas, who's that driver? I'm going to guess Stoff, because they kind of have that similar, like, eye smolder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the lazy, tuckered out ice molder. Stoffel goes hard. Um, it is ah. Ihan Daruvala. Andrew with two points ties up the game. That doesn't seem right, but I'll take it. Uh, I just think that uh, he is afraid of every moment he has on track. I mean, as we learned from Team Radio, he was nearly ready to just end it because he lost a bit of his wing and, and was scared about it falling out under his, his tires. So this is the safe driver, playing a safe in the back. Boys, who's his driver? I don't know. J-E-V again. You think it's Jeff? Uh, that's who I was 
I was going to pick. I don't have a secondary. I'll just say Stoffel again just to get a guess out. Uh, what about a tagline, you, you two? Not worth the points. The the scrappy, scratchy flow guy. In theme with all of the other taglines I've had so far. The sharp driver, a.k.a. the pointy driver, Andrew. That is going to be another two points. No, no, no. That's just one point. I didn't get the tagline, right? Dallas, who's that driver? I think that one is Sergio set to camera because he's Brazilian and what's on the back of... Was that Bulbasaur or uh, what's the next evolution of Bulbasaur? Ivysaur. Ivysaur. Whichever one it is that looks like Brazilian uh, flora. And if it's a a mid-level evolution, then it's the same thing of like Sergio can go far and... uh, you know, eventually become a formidable Venusaur, but for the time being, it's stuck in the ERT and kind of sucks balls. So I'm going Sergio, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Pascal just because uh, his head is kind of square. <laughs> mm. Bulbasaur's head is yeah, kind of square. Very square heads for both Pascal and Ivysaur. That's definitely what I was leaning into for this selection. Does anyone want to put a tagline down for this? Always getting tangled up. If you love it, let it grow. <laughs> the last chance driver Sergio set a Camara Dallas that is going to be a point for you bringing it to the final two drivers who's that Pokemon this oh Pokemon exactly you guys have been like... talking about the AI all day this is Pascal do you want to provide a, a, a tagline for this this Pokemon beep boop bop beep boop bop <laughs> So that, that definitely is Pascal. Uh, I'm going to go the the nuts and bolts metal driver. It is Pascal.exe, the machine learning driver. So that is going to be one point leading into the final Pokemon. So this comes down to whoever gets the, the tagline. Tag right. Correct. Who is that Pokemon? Stoffel's the only one left. Yeah, it is Stoffel. Stoffel is the only one left. It's Stoffel. So... We know it's Stoffel, but it's going to come down to the tagline. The electric rat. <laughs> <laughs> the electric rat driver. Dallas. Uh, I'm going to go with the tagline for Stoffel and Raichu is going to be uh, that jolty little mouse. It's Stoffel, <laughs> the virgin Pokemon. Why is it the virgin Pokemon? Just, I don't know. There's something about him that makes me feel like he's never experienced uh, sexual intercourse. And the and just how good uh, and friendly and sincere a man he is. But also, I feel like there's just a lack of life experiences uh, based on his personality. That reminds me of uh, both Raichu and a virgin Fuck. Okay. It was either that or it was going to be the Narc Pokemon because he definitely ratted out Penske last year at Portland. <laughs> but he doesn't seem as, as critical as a Narc. That is going to take us to the end. Andrew, come from behind victory in the uh, Pokemon naming game. But wait! There's there more. is one more Pokemon! I'm trying to think who we haven't done. Exactly. The most forgettable Pokemon. Andrew. Oh shit. Who is that Pokemon? Is it is it Edo? Is he the one who we haven't done yet? Yeah. It is Edo. What's that Pokemon's tagline? <laughs> the pointless driver. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that one more, but Edo does deserve some points. The journey to cameo driver. It's Edo, <laughs> the cameo driver. Dallas ties it up on the last driver. Oh my god. I frankly forgot about Edo myself <laughs> as the final driver. I was like so sure we we were out of drivers. How do we break the tie though? That's important. Taylor chooses one driver and we each choose a Pokemon that represents them. I want you both to come up with a better Pokemon for Robin Fries. Ooh, okay. His was good with the Phantom wrists. 
Mm-hmm. Hmm. I want to see you top that. Hmm. The wristless driver. Three, two, one. Mankey. Execute. Dallas, what makes you pick Mankey? Because he's got these, like, fixed wrists up top. <laughs> and he's scrappy. And his feet are so two like out the- of five. We never saw Robin Fryan's feet. Um, That's true. We did not see the feet. <laughs> We can only imagine that his ankles are as busted as his yeah. wrists. But it's got these fixed wrists that are in probably a optimized position, much like Robin Franz's wrists are in an optimized position to now drive post-injury. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Mankey is, you know, one of those Pokemon that just, if it gets on your head and starts just going at it, you're probably going to get your face ripped off. And I feel like Robin Fryens is capable of that, but kind of unassuming of like, oh, it's just a little Mankey, a little monkey thing. And then, you know, you're missing uh, an ear and an eye and part of your cheek. Yeah. So I, I did I did ask because Andrew's made a lot of sense to me when I saw yeah. it and yours didn't make any sense to me when I saw it and you didn't really make it any more clear to me, so I'm gonna have to give the win to Andrew Fuck. on that. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, Dallas, um the scars being ever present yeah. in the uh executor were pretty were a pretty brilliant stroke a genius there. Uh <laughs> The wounded, the wounded Pokemon, the glass Pokemon. <laughs> well, shit. And uh, and for those of you who stuck around, made it through the game with us, thank you. Um, Dallas, you want to send us the outro? I'll I'll clear them out. Hey, uh, thanks to everyone that watched and listened. Uh, it's still out. If you uh, if you think that some other Pokemon is better suiting for a driver. Let us know. Hit us up on the socials at Circuit Breakers Pod on YouTube and Instagram and at Talk Formula E on Twitter. And lastly, before we get out of here and take a few weeks off in preparation for Misano, be sure to check out It's Tricky on SoundCloud, the producer of our banging intro and outro music. Andrew, thank you so much for coming on. This was a whole yeah, lot of fun. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thanks for having me. And uh, all right, we'll see you at Misano. Okay, bye bye.